welcome to the Trill NBA Show. I'm your host, Felicia Ann Rose Anuha, aka the Trillist MBA you will ever know. And I'm here to help you survive and thrive in corporate America by giving you the truth and being as real as only I can be. Happy Sunday, everybody. Excuse the raspiness in my voice today. Don't know exactly what's going on, but uh, I will be just fine. I have a great show for you all today. I'm so excited. We are in season four. And as always now, we will get started with our Corporate Warrior Spotlight. Corporate Warrior Spotlight. So this week, I want to highlight somebody who I've been like stalking on the internet and paying attention to their career, which I think is amazing. Rosalind Brewer. If you don't know who this is, where have you been? You've been under a rock. Rosalind Brewer is the chief operating officer and group president for Starbucks. But even before she was at Starbucks, you guys, she was the president and chief executive officer of Sam's Club, which is a subsidiary of Walmart. But Sam's Club on its own is the eighth largest U.S. retailer. So Miss Brewer is a executive boss, okay? So we may not have a CEO of a Fortune 500 company since Ursula Burns, but Ms. Brewer is as close as we've gotten since Ursula, and she's still in this thing, and I'm so excited. So I'm happy to feature her this week. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about what she does now. So as the chief operating officer and group president for Starbucks, Roz Brewer leads the company's operating businesses across the Americas. So that's Canada, U.S., and Latin America. And Starbucks licensed stores, as well as the global functions of marketing, technology, supply chain, product innovation, and store development organizations. That's a lot. (laughs) Just a lot of work. (laughs) Roz was also appointed to the Starbucks Board of Directors in March of 2017, And she continues to serve on the board today. And not only is she on Starbucks board, y'all, she is also on Amazon's board. And here's the thing that you got to realize. When these Fortune 500 companies put a Black woman on their board, their profits go up. They make more money than they made before. So Starbucks, Amazon, I'm glad y'all recognized Y'all got a profit-generating sister in y'all's mix. So a couple of things you need to know also about this badass executive, corporate warrior. She actually made history, you guys, when she became the first woman and first African-American to lead a Walmart division. I cannot imagine what that really meant. In 2018, Fortune ranked her 33 on its list of 50 most powerful women in business. So again, just all the badassery. Now, prior to her being at Sam's Club and Walmart, she was with Kimberly Clark for 22 years. And she started as a scientist. And she ultimately rose the ranks to president of global non-woven sector in 2004. So she's just been slow and steady, wins the race, you guys. So it's not about where you start. It's about where you finish, right? Roz earned a bachelor's degree in chemistry from Spelman College, and she attended Wharton's Advanced Management Program and Stanford University's Director's College. She is a current director of Amazon, like I said before, and former director of Lockheed Martin, and Molson Coors Brewing Company, which was Miller Coors. They didn't change their name. Um, She also chairs the board of trustees at Spelman College, where she is an alum. So, Rosalind Brewer, thank you for being a kick-ass, badass example of what us Black girls can do with all our magic in corporate America. Wishing you all the best. Hopefully one day I'll get to meet you because I don't know you at all. (laughs) 
Somebody send her this podcast episode. If you have someone you want to nominate for our Corporate Warrior Spotlight, hit me up at ask at trillmba.com and let me know who you want to nominate. Also, give me some bullet points on why you want to nominate this person. I got an email with just a name. That's not helpful, y'all. I love y'all. Not helpful. (laughs) So, you know, do some edification. Get me jazzed and excited. Yes, I can Google, but I'm not going to Google it. Like, help me help you. For our topic this week, today's episode leans into mindset. I will tell the story of two VPs I met at my new gig. The first VP is a white male who was our guest at a lunch and learn for a small group of us new hires. During the convo, he asked us two questions. First, he asked, who wants to be a GM? Now, the new gig I work at is pretty diverse around my neck of the pay grade. So in the meeting, there were two males of color and four females of color outside of me and the VP. I was older than these people who, to me, are pretty much my peers as we are all still individual contributor level. Only me and another male in the room raised our hands. The other ladies were like, nah, we good. And the other male had a look of, I'm too new to know what I want to do. (laughs) I'm just trying to make it. But what I loved about this VP is he was so real and he was a people oriented leader. So already he's on my sponsor hit list, right? Like from this lunch, I was like, I got to meet with him. I got to see where his head is. Will he be one to help me? In this lunch, he told us it's okay to know that you don't want to be VP or general manager, but I want you guys to peep game. The organization is looking to grow people who raise their hands. And this is what this VP was trying to tell us. I think a lot of people in the room missed that. Now, the other question this VP asked was, what is the last job you want to have here at XYZ Company? And I was like, I know what it is, but I'm afraid to say. Because being a black woman saying you want to be the CEO of a Fortune 500 company just feels like a career limiting move, like real talk. But the awesome thing is he wants to know what I want to do. So I set up time with him for coffee in a couple weeks and I'm super excited. Hopefully I can build a sponsor relationship with this person. I think it's cool as all get out and really seems down to really helping people get to where they're trying to go in the organization. And those are the type of people you should look for as sponsors. Now that was last week. Now fast forward to this past week when I caught up with the VP I connected with at a work function when I first started the organization. Now this woman is a sister. And she is Ken Folk for sure. I love her already. She's like one of my favorite people already. I had her on my people to schedule coffee with list. Like I even showed her, but she so beat me to the punch, y'all. Like she shot me at the beginning of the year. She shot me this note saying, hey, I want to check in with you. Want to see how things are going. I was like, oh my God, you beat me to the punch. She really just wanted to circle back and see how I was doing and to make sure I was okay. I was so geeked. But I want to share with y'all the aha full circle moment in our conversation. She shared with me how she wants to work to keep the talent of color in the organization because it's so big and new people can really easily get lost and get off on a bad foot in the company. She also said that so many of us won't raise our hands 
to tell the organization that they want the C-suite roles. Hmm, I think I'm seeing a theme. And she was telling me like, she's like, I can have a top performer. And if they tell me, no, I'm good at this level, then they just won't be considered. No matter how great a value they create for the organization, no matter how much I want them to, they have to say they want it. Now, the crazy thing is that if you get labeled a top performer and you get into the pipeline, there are additional financial incentives. So like the organization that I'm at, they're looking for this talent that wants to rise and it does good work. And then they say, oh, you want to be this talent? Well, then we want to give you more money. What? So not only are you missing out on dope career opportunities, but you're also losing money when you don't raise your hand. Come on, sis. Now listen, so many of the companies are big. And if you have a bad manager to start with, it could be really crazy and difficult to navigate. But we have to be aware of all these things and we have to set ourselves up for success despite the organization. We also need to raise our hands and not go by this preconceived notion of what we think the higher up roles will mean, right? So what I know for sure is that when I'm a CEO, I will have access to all the help I need and all I will have to do is lean into my strengths and my talents of creating a vision, knocking down roadblocks, being resourceful and developing talent, right? So you got to understand what you're good at and what role would really, really suit you. And it could be as high as you want it to be. The higher up you get, the more resources you have, like executive admins and, you know, people listen to you. You could delegate the things you're not great at. Like there's no excuse for any of us not to try to go as high as we can go, right? So with that said, I really want you guys to take away the main thing of this segment is raise your hands. Ladies, we're not raising our hands. There's a New York Times article that came out back in 2017 titled, Why Women Aren't CEOs, According to Women Who Almost Were, where they interviewed former women C-suite executives that almost made it to the CEO spot. And they cut out for various reasons, but they identified a couple things that were all on us. So I want you to pay attention. Number one. Women tend to be less comfortable with self-promotion, i.e. when a VP says, do you want to be a general manager? Your answer should be yes. Even if you don't, just say yes, because you just don't know where it's going to take you. That's self-promotion. Number two, most women are not socialized to be unapologetically competitive. Okay, so I have an issue with this one because I don't believe in competition. And I... I believe that I'm going to do me, you going to do you, and I'm going to work hard and let the chips fall where they may. Because what God has for me, God has for me. You can't take it away from me. And if it ain't mine, you can't give it to me. So I'm unapologetic about that, that I don't believe in competition. But if you have a sense or get a feeling that your male counterparts are trying to compete with you, just, okay, boo, okay, good luck. And you go on about your merry way and you do your best. And that's it. And always put your oxygen mask on first. So don't go out of your way helping your quote unquote competition when you ain't helped yourself first. Okay. All right. Number three, some women get discouraged and drop out along the way. Those are just quitters. Don't be a quitter. <laughs> it's that simple. <laughs> All right. 
And number four, many women, accomplished as they are, don't feel the same sense of innate confidence as their male peers. You guys, there was a story in this article where there was some type of presentation or meeting or what have you. And the person was asking, was there anybody in the audience who was an expert at breastfeeding? And a man raised his hand and said he was because his wife had been breastfeeding for three months. Now, mind you, there were women in the audience who had children and had breastfed themselves, breastfed a child. And they did not raise their hand. That is bananas. <laughs> but this man raised his hand and said that he was an expert in breastfeeding. You guys, if that ain't the epitome of patriarchy and caucasity all rolled up into one, I don't know what it is. But I'm going to tell you right now, do not sit there silently and let these people say they are experts in things that you know you know about firsthand, okay? Now, one thing I want to note about this article is that most of the onus for women not making it to the top spot was the bias women faced. So I don't want to make it seem like this article was like, uh, here's all the things y'all ain't doing. No, that's not my point. My point is quite the opposite. There are real fucking barriers on this corporate climb. And they are super extra for us, right? Point blank, period, full stop, pause. But ladies, I want you to know that we can do this. If this is your dream, your ambition, you can do this. You just got to recognize the facets of the climb you can control and control the shit out of them. Now, when we get back from the break, we're going to answer this week's listener letter. What happens when you outgrow your mentee? We're going to talk about that when we get back. Hey, you guys, I'm trying to see something. So last night I was on Twitter and I follow a couple of CEOs who are on Twitter, which is always weird because, you know, that's probably not them doing anything with their social media. It's probably a whole team of PR people. But the CEO of T-Mobile, uh, his name is John Laguerre. I think that's how you say his name. I don't know exactly quite how to say it, but he seems real personable and like you can reach out and touch him. And so I was like, well, I got questions for CEOs. So why don't I just start asking them on Twitter? So I started asking him a question with the hashtag CEO questions. So follow CEO questions. And I'm going to be trying to see if these CEOs will talk to a sister and answer our questions about the job that we eventually want. So follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, all the Internet at Trill and BA Show. It's that simple. At Trill NBA Show. All the places. All right, let's get back to the show. All right, guys, it's time for listener letters. I really love this. And thank you guys for sending all your letters. Keep them coming. I have shows in the works now because of some of your letters. So this is great. <laughs> I love it. So this week's letter comes from... Kelly, and that's not her name. Never going to use y'all names. But you know who you are when I read your letter. Hi, Felicia. Over the past year, I have started to wonder if I have outgrown my mentor. She has been a mentor for the past 10 years. Ooh, that's a long time. But recently, I have recognized her guidance has been singular, forcing what she does as the only course of action and not what I have previously received from her in the form of options. Interested in hearing what you and the listeners think. So if you guys want to tell me what you think about this, hit me up at Ask at Trill MBA and tell me your thoughts. Have you ever had to transition out of a mentor relationship 
what did you do and how did it work? Like, what happened? Tell me the story. I want all the juicy details. I'm nosy. I mean, I'm intellectually curious. <laughs> but for me, first off, understand mental relationships are great until they aren't. Now, the articles I linked in the show notes for this week talk about how you leave the relationship, how you exit the relationship. And so I was like, ah. Oh. I mean, when dealing with us, assuming your mentor is another black woman, I want you to stop asking for advice and shift the conversations to be about her experience in her career, right? So these articles will be like, yeah, you just transition in this way or it's time for you to move on here. I I don't think you necessarily need to move on from this human who has clearly been working because they're your mentor and they've had their own experiences. I think the issue is you started out as a junior person and you were asking for advice, right? And it was this one way conversation because that sometimes happens in mentor relationships. I think now we need to shift because you're 10 years in. Now it needs to become more of a let's talk about the things that have been happening with us. Like, you know, tell me how you handled that time when that woman tried to touch your hair. Like, what did you do in that situation? Instead of a girl, this woman tried to touch my hair. Should I go to HR? Right. You know, it could have been in the past, like, well, you got these three options about going to HR. And now it's more like, girl, you know, you can't go to HR. And it's just that if it's like that, then now is that time to make that shift, right? And part of the issue may be that she sees you as you were 10 years ago because she's known you. I think sometimes it's kind of like moms. They always see the two-year-old, even though the child is 17. It's like, you're my baby. It's like, that's a grown-ass person at this point. Like, they big and tall and they smelly. So uh, what are we doing? But it's hard because you just... You get anchored on your memory. And so I think it's you reminding the person, you know, how much you've accomplished and where you've come from and where you're going. Just make sure they understand that you have evolved and that there needs to be a bit of an evolution. And a lot has changed in 10 years around how we work. The way we work is totally different. And according on what stage she is in her career, there may be things that you're experiencing that she hasn't experienced. And so I think at this point, learning from her examples and not advice would be a lot more helpful and also help strengthen y'all's relationship and create a really great dialogue between the two of you guys. So again, let me know what you guys think about Kelly's question hit me up at ask at trillmba.com. Happy to keep this conversation going because I would love to hear from some mentors who feel they may have outgrown their mentees. Like, hit me up. So that's our listener question for this week. Kelly, if you need it, you have a free coaching call because I read your letter on the show. Thanks for sending your letters, you guys. Thanks for listening to the show. And we'll be back with the most important thing from this episode right after the break. Hey, it's Felicia with the Trill NBA Show. And if you are out there and you have a business that would cater to African-American women between the ages of 27 and 45, High income earners, medium income is $75,000 a year. If that is the type of audience that you want to talk to, hit me up at ask at trillmba.com. I am advertising this spot right now. I could be talking about you and your product and all the great things that it could do. Like right now, if only you would hit me up and ask me to talk about you. Advertising is open. The show is for sale. (laughs) So come on, support the Trill NBA show. Advertise your product to some phenomenal women who are out here in corporate America doing great things. And support us. 
Hashtag we all we got. All right, you guys. We about to wrap up with the most important thing. The most important thing. If you take nothing else away from this episode, please take that you need to raise your hands. Say you want to climb as high as you want to climb. Claim it. Claim the role you want. I know that corporate can beat us down, to say the least. But no matter what, you have to believe in yourself and your abilities. Even when you are being dragged by the organization. Even if you're on a pip, girl, that don't mean that you don't add value. That's just some bullshit. Don't believe the hype. Listen, no one has all the answers. No one is super smarter than everyone else. No one has the gifts and abilities that you do. You just have to trust yourself. And you just have to know. You got this. All right? So, until next week, ladies. If you need some advice or help about a specific situation, go to trillmba.com slash coaching and schedule a 30-minute consultation with me. They are $40. So last week, I messed up and I read the wrong copy. It was the old copy, not the new copy. And so I honored last week. They're not free. (laughs) $40. Get an hour. I know I said 30 minutes, but it's usually an hour. I'm going to be real about it because I want to help and I like to talk. In addition, you can always email me your question. I'm happy to either answer that question or connect you to the right person if I don't have the answer. So again, that's trillmba.com slash coaching to schedule a consultation with me. And that's 40 bucks. Or you can hit me up at ask at trillmba.com to submit your question, concern, corporate warrior spotlight nomination, listener letter, just I'm here for you guys. Bring it in. Bring it in. Yes. We're going to make it. It's January. Until next time, guys, work on your taxes, drink your water, mind your business, and keep it trill. The Trill NBA Show is a Fair World Corp. LLC production. Executive produced by Felicia and Rose Inuha. Sound design and editing by Chris Mann, with Pod Shaper. Theme music is Kick Push by Ryan Little. Keep it trill every day, y'all. <laughs>